This is the lovely sunny field at West Solent Solar Cooperative Solar Farm near Lymington. Here you can see the first activities on site back in late April 2014 with the Scottish and Southern Energies substation being installed. These are the glass reinforced plastic panellings, panels going on around the switchgear. Here we have uh, the pile testing uh, whereby the Southwest Geotechnical uh, drove piles into the ground and then basically pulled them out to check the resistance of the earth and to check the, check the strength of the piles that were going to be holding the, uh, the solar panel arrays. That's right, back in January they'd done some soil survey tests to test out the strength of the soil and the degree of uh, inert material that might obstruct the piles uh, if they were dri driven into the ground. Uh, the soil survey results were good and on the basis of that it had been recommended by Solar Century, our solar farm installation contractor, that we go for a pile driven one and a half metres into the ground and so this is West Southwest Geotechnical testing that this was the right depth indeed and here you can see uh, one of the piles that's been already tested being pulled out of the ground um, to be taken away. There were 1,065 piles in total uh, driven into the ground. Um, it took about three and a half days. Um, the contractors were very cooperative or helpful. Um, certainly with the neighbours there was a few hiccups with the, uh, the head of the equipment they used to do the piling. They had to rush it in from Europe. Um, but we managed to get all the piling done quickly at minimal inconvenience to the neighbours. This is late May when uh, construction was just starting and the first deliveries were coming into sight. This is the framework for the solar arrays arriving in from Belgium. There were five lorry loads coming in. As you can see, the ground was very muddy at this point. Very muddy indeed, which made quite a few challenges for the construction uh, vehicle drivers. And here you have uh, yeah, the, the setting out team setting out ready for the piling. And then the solar PV panels started arriving, Q-cells brought in from Poland, 11 lorry loads, a total of about 330 pallets worth of panels came in over about 10 days. And here we have the piles actually being driven into the ground. That, that uh, piece of equipment there is it's almost sort of autonomous, somebody drives it with a little uh, tracked vehicle, it goes from pile to pile, drives each one in turn. And there was just a team of four guys from Evias, a German-based piling company, but they're so familiar with the solar century process and with Aaron Construction, who are the on-site uh, contractors, that they work just so smoothly. It's all just like clockwork. And as you can see here, there's a, a calm atmosphere. They know exactly what they're doing. It's methodical, systematic, and just very satisfying to observe and watch this whole process taking place. Right, here we've got some um, trenching going on with some... Low voltage cabling, yeah, yeah. you think? Yeah, Low voltage yeah. cabling, I think that was the, uh, the cable trench for that. Here you can see the framework starting to take shape. Yes, weekly meetings with Jason Arnold on the left there, the installation manager from Solar Century. Uh, members of West Solent would uh, attend each week to review the progress and track how things were looking for the following week. Yes, you can see here the framework is taking shape and the pile of solar panel pallets is gradually being uh, uh, reduced in size as they take each here we have this the away. first table of uh, panels has been installed. That was specially done for the BBC who came down to film on site. You'll see the rest of the pallets are being distributed from, uh, around site. Um, they were all distributed to clear some space in the compound. That was one of the, I guess it was logistically was quite uh, complex having the compound and, and being able to sort of arrange for deliveries and, and move around. So they yeah, it was a real pinch point, yeah. wasn't it, at times of how to arrange the deliveries and coordinate that so that... Uh, everything could be actually accommodated on site. 
you can still see that despite all the activity the grass is still growing very uh, vigorously testing the uh, technical solutions are testing how, how sturdy the framework is <laughs> More cable trenching. Yes, this is the sand going in on top of the cables. They use sand rather than just putting back the topsoil in um, because there are no stones in it. Uh, it. It does two things, the sand. Um, Steve has reminded me that it... Uh, yeah, it, you basically um, it, it's stopping any heat spots. Um, it allows the heat to dissipate because you have lots of problems, lots of power going through those lines. You want to make sure that, they, uh, that the heat is dissipated. And also it removes any chance of sharp flints and stones abrading the insulation and causing a, an earthing fault on the cable. So that there, we're looking there basically up the main track which runs all the way up the, the park um, and they just filled in that trench. Yes. More solar panels, we're getting close to yeah. the 9,372 being installed, just a few boxes left to, to install onto the framework. Uh, really starting to look like a solar farm now and this is only week four I think and yeah. it's it's looking very impressive very impressive and we were blessed by this stage early June with the most glorious weather absolutely fantastic just perfect for building a solar farm <laughs> The guys doing the panelling, I mean, it, they're a, it's a well oiled machine. I mean, we were really impressed by all the subcontractors and, and the main contractors. Um, just got on very methodical, very businesslike, no messing around. Um, just to see how quickly the, uh, the panels are installed, the DC wiring you can see here going in now. Um, there were a maximum of 25 guys approximately on site at, uh, during the construction. And uh, one lady, I have oh to yes, say. Yes, and one lady yeah. working on the string team, string pulling team. Oh yes, this is the foundation work for the on-site substation that contain, will contain the transformer, the main transformer to step up the voltage to, to uh, the grid level. And they're doing some surveying work, setting out, getting the orientation and the ground prepared for the concrete to be poured. The last of the inverter, so the, yeah, the last of the panels going in, I think we're going to be seeing some inverters shortly. Yes. Yes, yeah, so we're going to say something about the fact that the panels were laid, as you can see, in a transverse, a landscape orientation, and there are some real benefits to this. Steve? Yeah, yeah. Um, that basically gives you better performance in the winter. I mean, the, the panels were angled at 22 degrees. They had an 8-metre eight row spacing. Um, you accept the fact there you'll get a bit of shading in the winter, but by having them land in a landscape orientation, that minimises the performance drops in the winter. Um, here we can see the, uh, the guys just starting to undo the DC cables for the, uh, the modules. They'll be connecting those up and then doing some string tests. So how many panels were there in a string, Steve? 22. 22 panels per string and then oh. 6 or 7 strings per inverter. And then 64 inverters, uh, which were all connected up. And then via the distribution boards were connected into the, uh, the transformer. Yes, yes. It's like branches of a tree, isn't it, all coming down yep. into the main trunk, yep. isn't it, effectively? Just uh, the little twigs then joining into the boughs, and then all the boughs joining into the main trunk, and it's literally a gathering process, yep. pulling all the power that's being generated from each solar panel, and gradually coming so, down this network. So here we have an inverter um, going in, the guys lifting on, they were very heavy. Uh, but these inverters take the DC current from the modules and convert it into AC, which is an alternating current, which is what you would have at home. Um, and that, yeah, they then are then com the, the, the inverters are combined together via these distribution boards to then feed in all together into the uh, transformer. You'll, uh, I think we see something of the transformer later. Oh yes, this is the, one of the distribution boards again, another great unwieldy piece of equipment, a panel board it's described as there are seven of these on the site, taking power from a cluster of inverters. So at each successive stage, the cable 
gets fatter as you can see the the narrower cables going in and produce power to come out through one very broad fat cable that then goes up to the substation checking that all the brackets are, are fully tightened you can see the difference here end of june we've had a long spell about three to four weeks of no rain and from having started the construction in a an absolute quagmire <laughs> now enveloped by clouds of dust every time a vehicle was moving around the site so uh, the solar panels were actually suffering were covered, from a, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a real layer of dust all over them this is the sse substation the switch gear uh, this is the, uh, the contractor who'd come to connect the 11 kilovolt cable from the on-site transformer substation down to the SSE uh, substation. And here we have four inverters um, behind the uh, array and a distribution board. Yes, you can um, see the larger cables coming out the distribution board. And here are the large cables all coming in from the distribution board underneath the substation which contains the transformer this is probably one of the the coolest places on the site because the weather had turned extremely warm by this stage we're into the last few days before the go live deadline of june 27th here you can see the burnell team feeding through the 11b cables into the rmu as it's called ring main unit. We suddenly had um, lots of electricians on site, they were doing uh, all the, uh, there was the string testing, the, uh, yeah, the, the the DC cabling, there was the high voltage cabling going in, it was a hive of activity here and this was, what was this, it was about a week, to, well, it was less than a week to go I think wasn't it? it was, about four it was, days. Yeah. yeah. But there was never any sense of pressure or, or panic. They just worked so calmly and methodically. They knew exactly what they were doing at all times. They had a clear plan of how they were going to approach this. There were certain things that were not essential to the go live, and those were obviously left till later. Here you can see the spaghetti coming out of the door of the transformer unit here, the on-site on substation. And all those cables have got to be fed in by some poor soul here you can see wriggling in and out of the confined space and uh, that on a hot day is not so good this is better underneath the, uh, the the substation it was cooling amongst the concrete and the sand and there are all the finished connections going through the floor of the substation so yes those are all the cables from the distribution boards coming in from all that have been combined from the inverters going up into the transformer and then a single cable coming out this one we can see here which then runs down this is the connection to the grid yeah. isn't it yeah. and on the wednesday before the friday start up this is uh, scottish and southern energy came on site and actually those are the three uh, phases of the 11 kv cable joining the grid the overhead power line that uh, runs across the field so that was uh, quite an exciting process and uh, jonathan got a nice ride on the uh <laughs> on the cherry picker <laughs> and here they're putting in the sand as again this is a, a statutory process to to fill in over hv cables like this high voltage being 11,000 volts and higher um to actually make that cable safe under the ground and this is mickey uh from aaron construction just um grading the ground flattening it out um we're well, starting to prepare the soil for our wildflower seeds, which were sown in late July, August, after starting one of our last weekly meetings. I see there's no sign of any uh, of the cakes that we would have on a regular basis at these meetings. <laughs> we're well fed and watered at those week meetings. <laughs> Oh yes, more clearing the yeah. weeds, <laughs> ready for the wildflower seeds. So a lot of machinery movement, but uh, this time we're preparing the ground, tidying up. Uh, quite satisfying to see this all improving step by step. All uh, right, here we have, um, these are the offcuts from the wire, which were um, stripped of their plastic, and then the aluminium and the, uh, the copper was collected to be recycled. Yeah, I'm glad he's doing it, not me. 
Yeah, oh, yeah nice. all the aluminium from the wires that's recycled. And here we have G59 date. There's the cake. Yes. <laughs> so this is the date when basically the uh, the, the, the whole uh, park was tested and it's, it's, it's tested that it can um, generate and connect to the grid. It has to sort of undergo loads of statutory tests. And everybody was told to keep away from the uh, transformer station while the startup was uh, going ahead. So uh, this is the actual transformer you can see inside the uh, substation. And then there we go, there's 2,160 well, here we are kilowatts. The, yeah, that's us checking that we can actually see some oh, this is power the going meters. through the meter. Yeah. That's right, the meters, uh, when the export of the power going off and the red lights on the left, that show the meter was working. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, and then, yes, power being produced, these are the inverters. Those are the, uh, the, the the displays there are nearly 30 kilowatts coming from... Yeah. The maximum uh, rating is 30 kilowatts, yeah. isn't it? Output from each one. <laughs> and the cake, which I have to say, disappeared very quickly. Okay. <laughs>